So fire. He's a rapper. He's a singer. He's a beat maker, hit maker. He's here on our show today to talk about his new EP, To Get You Through the Rain. We are chatting with PMB Rock. Show him some love in the chat, guys. Drop some fire emojis, some fire emotes in the chat. Show him some love. What up? What's good, here. PMB Rock? What's the word? How are you? How's it going? I know that you're in LA right now. You had a wild night, you told us earlier. What, what, what's going on? I'm recouping. <laughs> You're recouping. I love it. I love it. I don't even want to know what, what went down last night, but a part of me really does want to want to know. Give us spill some tea. Just give us a little bit of an idea as to what was going on last night. It was just a little house party. Okay. Okay. No, we just was turned. Okay. A little bit too late. <laughs> all good. All good. We're so glad to like, have you. I literally went to sleep at like eight in the morning. Did you? Are you saying, so basically when we did our tech check earlier, you had just fallen asleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because if, if I'm allowed to say, initially he had his camera off and he was in bed and I'm like, so you're telling me you're not going to do it in bed? <laughs> I love it. I love that despite partying, despite being up so late into the wee hours of the morning, you still joined us today. We appreciate you. Um, we just heard a track, High, from To Get You Through the Rain. We hadn't heard much from you in a few years since your debut album, Trap Star Turned Pop Star, and then you blessed us with To Get You Through the Rain recently. How did you, how did this all come together? Um, to Get You Through the Rain was like pretty much a title in itself it was like just letting y'all know i'm just dropping this to get y'all through the rain i know y'all been begging for the new pnb i haven't dropped nothing in like over two years and this was a sign for my fans i dropped it on my birthday it's like a gift for me to them on my birthday type shit because i was like stuck dealing with little label stuff and it was, we wasn't like everybody was half and half on whether it's not what i was trying to put out was gonna be an album what i was trying to like so i just was like fuck i'm gonna drop a little ep yes i love that give, give a little taste right before you drop the whole meal I love yeah. that. Love that. So obviously we just heard Hi um, with DJ Luke Nasty, which is interesting because that song was recorded a minute ago back in 2015 and it kind of came back and it kind of blew up like a lot of things are doing right now on TikTok. Talk to me about the story behind that song. Was it surprising to you that like it kind of has this new life that was breathed into it because of TikTok? Yeah, it was like that was like one of those unexpected gems from like. It was it was a good feeling though. Um, like we did the song in 2015. I actually remixed his remix, which was a remix already to Anderson Pac song. So he remixed Anderson Pac. I remixed him, and I put it out. It went viral then. But now, like the kids, you know, they just be picking up on music however they want to do it on TikTok. Like all my a lot of my old stuff be going viral for some reason. Um, but yeah, they picked it up and he made the dance, made it go viral. So I just had like no brainer for me to just capitalize off and just remake the song and put it out officially because it never was out officially. It just was like a freestyle. Yeah. Yeah. When you're making music right now, considering the fact that TikTok has done that for so much of your older tracks, are you keeping like the kids in mind when you're making music or are you just making it and you're like, yo, I really hope that this pops? It's like half and half. You know, mm -hmm. I'll be trying to make some songs like to where though I know like it's going to be TikTok friendly, but I also want to keep like maintain like my sound and I don't want to switch it up too much. Yeah. But I, th I do a half and half, so like I still give you what I've been giving you, but I also try to incorporate some type of TikTok-ish vibes in it, you feel me? So I try to capture that one little clip where it's like 10, 11 seconds where I feel like it's going to be a viral moment. Mm. You know? Yeah, that's that's real strategic. Um, I do want to talk about some of the tracks, though. Um, on your EP, one of them is Open Eyes. You use a choir for that. Um, what What kind of inspired you to use a choir for Open Eyes? Eyes Open With Me Thug and Little Baby was like a song that I tried to do those backgrounds and shit on my own. Like I tried to do like, cause I felt like when me and Thug, it wasn't, it wasn't Little Baby in the song, it was just me and Thug. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like it was like something missing. Like it was like, it was like a crazy song, but it was like, it still was like a, a like a show. So I tried to do some background vocals on it. And it, ain't, it just ain't come out how I wanted to come out. And I was just like, man, I think I need a choir for this shit. Like the real deal choir. You know, we reached out, got a choir, paid like 1500 got a choir. <laughs> And pretty much that's it. I got the choir on here, and then it still was kind of short though. The song was like 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 probably two, almost two minutes. Yeah. So he was like, we still need to make that like make it that extra factor to get it longer, and also bring somebody that's going to bring attention to the song and actually bring more people to the song. So mm -hmm. when we came up with little baby, it was like a no brainer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
did you just happen to like tap into him like what made you because i know you have um thug on it and you got little baby so why did you specifically tap into them did it just so happen like did you guys happen to be in the studio and you just kind of was like yo get on this track or like how did that come together me and thug was cooking up together in the studio and little baby came about because we just felt like we needed like another person like another big person mm -hmm. that's gonna break because we the song was just too short to be like we didn't want to play with the song we wanted it to be serious yeah <laughs> yeah it's interesting because I feel like this EP is very vulnerable. We have songs like My Bad, which is like a ballad apologizing to your girl, or that's what it feels like. Um, then nice. we have Lost You to the Game, where you're basically talking about missing your boys and crying in the kitchen. And it kind of felt like, to me, it felt like a Bone Thugs and Harmony moment a little bit. Um, like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to miss everybody. Like, that's kind of the vibe that I got there. But what I loved about that was that you were very vulnerable, and I feel like you kind of showed us something that a lot of rappers maybe don't do. Like we hear about losing um, their loved ones and then seeking revenge, but you were just very open and honest about, you know, that real pain and really um, talking publicly about how it hits you emotionally. So how do you get to that point where you just feel comfortable enough to share that type of stuff, like about you crying in the kitchen? I don't know, I've always been like that in my music. I feel like I just keep it real. I don't feel like I got to sugarcoat shit because I feel like everybody in the world going through the same type of shit, if not the same exact type of shit. Like, mm -hmm. There's similarities in everybody like that we all can relate to each other with. And that just was one of those drones. I feel like, shit, a lot of, when I go over my friend's house and shit in Philly in the trenches, they be having the same type of setup as me. Like, you'll see a whole bunch of obituaries over here on somebody's kitchen cabinet or some shit or like somebody's china cabinet. And you got like just pictures of everybody just living their life mm -hmm. on the other side. And that should be like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's crazy. Do you go home often? No, not really. There's too much beef in the city for me. That shit. I know. Crazy. I was going to say, do you feel comfortable going home? I'm always comfortable wherever I'm at, but I just don't want to be like always on point, like super on point. I have to look over my shoulders every five seconds. Yeah. I have to be in out of spots. Like, I like being comfortable for me. In Philly, I ain't gonna say I'm not comfortable because that's always gonna be my city. I'm always gonna be comfortable there, but I know the differences as opposed to me being out here in LA. You're mm -hmm. yeah, that's real. That's real. It's so interesting. I think one of the things that I'm like just most impressed with you and your craft and your artistry is the fact that you were you were really able to get it out the mud. Like you had a uh, an upbringing that for a lot of people would have taken them out. I know you got kicked out at 15. I know that you were in and out of jail. I know that you was you were homeless at one point. Um, so what kind of pushed you to the point where you were like, yo, I really just got to, I really got to change things before, um, before things get too bad. Um, it was that point in time where, you know, I used to, I was running in and out of jail. I was in and out of jail, but that was like kitty stuff for me. And then I got locked up as an adult and there was nothing major. But when I finally got a chance to sit down, I had got locked up and they gave me two and a half years. So I was like, damn. And around this time, I ain't had nothing. I had no money. I ain't really had no support system. I just was in jail by myself and just figured I'd just try to figure something out. I started making the music in jail. And, and it just kind of got, it got big in the jails. Like everybody in the jails was came famous in jail. That wow. shit is kind of hard. Like, because in jail, people don't really fuck with shit. Like, they really like, right. they keep it too real in jail. Like, your shit ain't hot. They're going to let you know, like, in a harsh For way. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, so, okay. Well, you just, have to, what, what did that process look like? Like, were you writing rhymes with your celly like were you like freestyling and during recreation time like what does that look like for you do you have a notebook that you like wrote things in yeah i had came home with a notebook i wish i could find that shit right now that shit probably got some hits in there for real oh uh, yeah but I, I i used to write all my shit down we used to have like low low radios and shit up there and people used to have like keyboards where they'd be making beats and shit up there mm. so it was really like it, was, it wasn't that hard for me to like get my shit out there because it was already like a culture in jail. Any jail, that's that's like a culture. You got yeah. your workout people, you right. got your, your motherfucking people that's going to uh, be playing sports all day. You got your <laughs> car players and you got your musicians and shit. You feel me? And that's just what I was in the musician game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was there anybody you were locked up with that ended up making it the way that you did that you can remember? No, not that I could think of. Shit, I hope so, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. What were there any things um, when you were there that kind of like <laughs> inspired you? Because I imagine like you have a lot of time to think, a lot of time to kind of be in your head and in your thoughts. Um, were there any like outside things that kind of inspired you while while you were there, or was it like just being around other people who were interested in music and like making music? Just being in the situation that I was in is like 
I, I just was writing about my personal shit, and when I seen those guys in there, they really motivated me to sing and, and, and put it out there because these guys were singing and rapping and shit. And you would think, like, in jail, everybody's so tough and everybody's so hardcore, but they, they was showing their vulnerability in there. They was telling stories about how they miss baby moms ain't treating them right, how they miss their kids, like, all that yeah. type of shit. The shit that we can relate to because we all in the same situation. So right. We all in jail. Right. Yeah, definitely. I know that you recorded um, Fleek in prison and it ended up on your 2014 debut mixtape. So that's pretty yeah. dope. Um, yeah, I wrote that shit in jail. I was in the hole. I, I had like this some nut shit. I got put in the hole and I wrote yeah. that in the hole. Yeah. What was that? Oh, that's crazy. Wait, tell me what that was like. I mean, I've been there a lot of times, so it ain't really shit to me no more. It's like, it's like a mind <laughs> thing. 23 hours in one, you locked in 23 hours. That one hour you could come out, take a shower, maybe use the phone if you got people that you can talk to. But I just used that shit to be like, I started, I was in there working out and I just was making the best music I could make. Yeah. So it was just like really nothing but time for me. Yeah, you need to find that notebook. I feel like, like you said, there's definitely some hits in there for sure. Hey, well, if I find that notebook, man, that's like a $20 million notebook right there. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm kind of curious though, at what point did you realize, like, did you have that aha moment? Like, yo, I can turn this, because I know that you started making beats when you were a kid on your mom's boyfriend's like beat making equipment, right? So yeah. at what point did you realize like, yo, I know how to make beats, because obviously I taught myself how to do so. I know how to write, and I know how to write stuff that people care about and want to listen to. Yo, I can make this into an actual like career move and like collect a bag off of it. I think I, I wanted to do, I tried to do it at one point in time, but I, ain't, I didn't have like the right, all of these tools and shit like that's here for us now, like the SoundClouds, the motherfucking, just the different platforms, like even Apple Music, none of that shit was even available. Like it wasn't there for me for that. So in 2006, 2007, I didn't know what to do with the music except for upload it onto my MySpace page and make it like my profile picture song and shit. Yeah. But it was even lit back then because I had people that I didn't even know making my song their profile song as well. Like, so, you know, like Wait, that was like kind of serious. Yeah, nigga make this on their profile, so that shit, they, mean, they really like it, you feel me? And when I used to take my songs down off of MySpace and re-upload it with another song, people used to be mad, like, yo, you just took my profile song. Down. Right, like, exactly, because doesn't it wipe it off of everybody's page? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's when I knew, that's the kind of, that's when I knew that I had something. And then, yeah. that was like 2006, 2007. Right. But I was already making this type of music then, but I just wasn't like this hard on going crazy. I was still in the street, still right. a young nigga just trying to figure shit out. For real. But that was like the key moment where I knew like I had something good because when them people was like coming at me on some gangster shit that I didn't even know, they're like, bro, put my motherfucking song back on my page. Like, you fucking my profile. <laughs> Ready to fight you off that like, song. <laughs> Damn, my bad. You feel me? I didn't even know y'all was fucking with it. You feel me? Like... Wow, that's pretty. That's that's pretty dope. That's one way to definitely um, realize your your talent for sure. When people are coming at you like that, like you said, um, you talk a lot about SoundCloud, and I know that you put a lot of stuff out on SoundCloud. You still kind of play around on SoundCloud. Um, what is it about that platform that you really love? Is it the ability to kind of like stumble upon talent that's like completely unknown? Like, what is it about that particular platform you love? That's just the underground scene. I, I'm like an underground nigga. Like, I always be underground with my shit. Like, no matter how many mainstream artists I tap in with, I'm, all, I'm probably tapped in with more underground artists than I'm tapped in with mainstream artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's interesting, because I know you have um, SoundCloud Days. Tell us a little bit about SoundCloud Days. SoundCloud Days, I just dropped that shit, like, right after I dropped the going through the, uh, to get you to the rain, because like, I just, I'm in that time, and I'm in that mode, I just want to flood, just keep mm -hmm. putting out music, because... I got a lot of music to put out and we just been stalling and stalling and stalling trying to consider shit as an album and I just got tired of naming things, playing the name game. So if it's not going to be an album, I wasn't going to drop it. But now I'm just like, fuck it. I'm just going to put all this shit out. EP, EP, EP until y'all want, until we on album mode, you feel me? Yeah. So I got another EP coming out after this one too for the Valentine's Day. But it's just like, SoundCloud Days was me. I just I just came out of a relationship, like fresh out of a relationship, whereas the like I was I felt like I was I I had like writer's block and shit. Like I couldn't really think of nothing because I just was stressed out too much. Yeah. Just going through regular life shit. So once I like separated me and my me and my baby mom, we separated. Mm -hmm. We still cool, but we separated and I got time to just have time to myself and I went to booth probably for like two weeks straight in the crib. Just I had an Airbnb. I was in the studio with all my young artists that I got, like up and coming artists from my new lane camp. 
And I just was vibing out with them. They all young, you feel me? They all on that wave, on that underground up and coming wave. I just, I just was knocking out songs, like three, four songs a day. Just getting back in that rhythm and having fun, you feel me? And not being too serious. Like as far as the structure of the songs, how long the songs is, I ain't care if I only had one verse on the song. Like I just was having fun. That's how I used to do it when I was making some music on SoundCloud. So I just ran it back. And I missed those vibes. Like when I think of SoundCloud and shit, that's 2016, 2017, right. you know, when everybody was just on the vibes. It was all up and coming. Like me, the Uzis, you feel me? Like yes. the Cardis, the XXXs. Like this shit was fun. Like it was like you can still walk down the street and see us. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like mm-hmm. now it's not the same. I want to take it back to those type of vibes. You feel me? Where that shit this was like the nostalgic feeling. Definitely. So I named it days to put you in the days, like take you and put you in the days, but it's also the SoundCloud days, like back in the SoundCloud days. Mm. It's like a double entendre type shit. I love that. I love that. I love that you're also just like shining a light on talent that maybe we wouldn't have stumbled upon if we're not on SoundCloud or we wouldn't have found. How are you finding some of these artists? Like, what are you looking up when you go on SoundCloud? Or are you just like, I don't know, just clicking on a category and playing? A lot of times I'll, I'll start off by looking at me, you feel me? And I look at a similar artists to me and that shit just keep going, keep going. Like I might yeah. just go down and I might be on that bitch for like a whole two hours just listening to different people. Yeah, yeah. The industry, you know, yeah. Yeah, the industry is super competitive. I think it's interesting that you're like creating this platform for those artists. I think a lot of people might think about that and for some people it might be like why would I help out someone who could potentially be my competition but I'm I'm curious um from your perspective why you feel like it's important to like kind of give them that platform that they can springboard I do it off of. I do it because when I first came into this shit 2015 when I got signed and I was looking up to all these older rappers and shit that niggas I should listen to mm-hmm. when I finally got to interact with them like it just was like a letdown like what the fuck? Like these motherfuckers ain't nothing like how I thought they were. Like they don't show no love to the young niggas. They feel like they scared of me or something. Like I'm about to come and take money out your take, <laughs> like take money out your pocket and take food off your plate. I'm just this music industry biggest shit. You ain't saying that shit to the rock and roll singers and the motherfucking yeah. the R and B people. Like we just all we we could all get money together. But that's just long story short. Like I I didn't like the way I was rubbing the, rubbing shoulders with people that I used to fuck with. And, it wasn't really showing me that same type of love, you feel me? Because I wasn't at that level where they at. Yeah. But I don't, I'm not on that shit. I'm a humble nigga. I keep everything cordial, you feel me? I, if anybody meet me, they say, like, damn, you be chilling. Like, you don't be on that extra Hollywood shit. Like, fuck no, I came out the trenches, bro. I made it out. Right. And a lot of people that I know is still there. So I'm still, I'm half ass, you feel me? Mm-hmm. And I just be wanting to show them that love, shine that light on them. Because ain't nobody do that shit for me. And it's easy. It's not hard at all. Yeah. I really fuck with them. And it's like this. People be really fucking with these young niggas. Like a lot of the bigger artists actually already tapped in with them listening to their music, but they won't even let them niggas know because they feel like it's like a threat. Mm-hmm. But they feel like they probably was trying to steal a little bit of their sauce and right. incorporate it into their shit. But it'd be weird. Probably. It'd be just weird. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's weird. And it's also like giving them this platform, you're able to work with them and tap into their talent too. So it's like everybody wins almost. Yeah, especially if that shit hot. I'm not going to just right. tap in with you. That shit hot. And it's like, I don't look at it like, you're going to steal my fans and none of that shit because they're my fans. They're always going to rock them regardless. They listen to other people all day. It's not just listening to me. They listen right. to motherfucking different artists all day. And it's so much money in this music shit, bro. Like, why would you think like that? Yeah. Like, exactly. Everybody can make money. Exactly. There's a bag for everybody. That's so true. You've, um, I imagine you've probably interacted with a bunch of artists, found a bunch of artists. Are there any artists that you found on SoundCloud before they, like, blew up and, like, years later you were like, yo, I was onto their music years ago. Yeah, I mean, that's like always, I always, this shit always happens to me. Like people like, people, I'm gonna start a little early, like people like Rich the Kid, mm-hmm. Do, uh, 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 Dage Loaf, Post yeah. Malone, Trippy Red, even, even niggas like Uzi and, and Tierra Wax. Like I was big, way tapped in with all these people before anybody had any big head, any clout in them, you feel me? Like yeah. I was, I was already on them, you feel me? Right. It's like a lot of people like that though. Like, I got, I could go over the list. Like, I even I was one of the first people that got a feature with Twenty One Savage when nobody even knew who Twenty One Savage wow. was. Lil Baby, I ain't nobody really knew who Lil Baby was. I took him on tour me in two thousand seventeen mm-hmm. when his shit was just now getting rolling. You feel me? I did right. two songs with him and Marlo in twenty sixteen when nobody knew who they were. I just be on shit. You mm-hmm. feel me? I got the good air. I'm like the, the trap A and R. You feel me? Yes, <laughs> oh God. I love that. Self-proclaimed trap a and I love that. You know, it's so interesting. So you mentioned Tierra Whack, you mentioned Uzi, both from Philly, 
Did y'all have a relationship prior to, like, did y'all know each other at all prior to all of we, this? I'm, I'm not going to say we had, like, a relationship, but we was tapped in. Like, mm. one of my first shows, and one of, we all had, like, our own first show together, type shit. And Philly Dope. was, like, this little underground, grungy-ass shit with, like, ten people in that motherfucker. <laughs> we all performing this shit. <laughs> I but love that. When I listened to, I was watching everybody perform. I was, like, one of the first people to perform, because I was, like, the one of the bigger niggas. Like, everybody was waiting for me to perform. Yeah. So I was just watching everybody perform, and I picked Uzi, and I picked Tierra out mm-hmm. at the date. I'm like, yo, whatever you on, you gotta stay on that shit, because you fire, like, Right. Y'all niggas, y'all two coming different, man. Right? I'm fucking with that shit. Yeah. And they was like, man, like, damn, man, you know we fuck with this shit. You like, you like the top nigga in the city right now, bro. Like, they was like humble and appreciative. Right. He was all just on some young niggas shit, happy to be hearing different vibes and niggas making different music and that shit actually being hot and we can feel it. Yeah, so fire. I love that. I love that. And I love being able to like see the trajectory and see people coming up together from the same place, especially from Philly. I feel like people sometimes will sleep on Philly. Um, so that's pretty dope. Were you by any chance? Because I know like back in the day, people used to be like on the corners um, freestyling. Were you in that uh, scene in Philly <laughs> at all? I ain't going to lie. Like it was this little era, like a headshot DVD era, like all the Meek Mills, motherfucking uh-huh. Joy has all that. I used to be a, I used to love watching it and shit, but it was like my friends and shit, they used to be better with that shit than me. Like I used to try to do it, mm. but I ain't take it that serious. Like I wasn't yeah. really trying to be on no headshot rapping shit. Like I used to really be having <laughs> melodies in my head as opposed to that gangster shoot them up, kill shit. I could do it. <laughs> I love, I love, I like that type of shit, but it's not really my lane. You feel me? But yeah. I used to be rapping on the corners and shit sometimes when niggas just, because niggas from my block, everybody, a lot of people from PNB rap. Like PNB is not, I'm just not the only PNB. PNB is just like a, an acronym for my street name and everybody from PNB down there right you feel me so mm. they used to be coming through spinning on the block and doing little videos and DVD shit I used to just be in the cut though you hear me sometimes I might rap but sometimes I just be just there in the cut just chilling hyping niggas up yeah yeah that's that's dope it's it's interesting because it's it shows your um it's kind of like shows what you're doing right now like you hyping people up back then you have a label right now you have Philly artists <laughs> on it I'm sure that was an intentional move right to have a bunch of Philly artists on it I got a lot of Philly artists on there, but the majority of my artists is not from Philly. Like, I got like mm. three artists, from, maybe three producers from Philly, but everybody else is from like Cleveland, New York, Jersey, uh, okay. fucking Texas, Mississippi. Like these niggas is coming from different places. I'll be just finding them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So obviously you're big on dropping mixtapes. You look for a lot of new artists on SoundCloud. Who's caught your attention lately that we should be on to? Jace, I fuck with Jace. I don't know if y'all are familiar with Jace. He spelled his name a little weird, like I A Y Z. He that's like my top one right now. I fuck with Jace. I fuck with Fazo, Young Fazo. I fuck with Baby Santana. I fuck with Autumn. I fuck with um. The list can go on for real for like I got so many people. Yeah. I fuck with niggas like Fiji Macintosh. I fuck with niggas like I don't want to miss nobody because they can be mad. But bro, y'all know who I fuck with. Like everybody that be calling me and texting me, and we talk all the time on a day to day basis. Don't think I forgot about y'all. I'd be fried. You hear me? But I fuck with a lot of the young up and cover artists. Like the new wave of music that's coming out now is it's turned. Mm-hmm. Like it's on that wave. Yeah, yeah. So of course, again, like we had mentioned before, um, you dropped an album in 2019. Your debut album had a lot of huge features on it. Um, XXX, Lil Wayne, Diplo, Quavo, Tory Lanez, A Boogie with the Hoodie, like all of the above, whole bunch of names. Um, wondering if you plan on tapping into any of these other artists for anything upcoming at all? Or if not, um, if you're interested in working with anybody who you haven't worked with yet? I mean, I've been chilling on the features and shit lately because I did, I, I seen some shit on YouTube and it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Wait, like, what was it? It was like PNB Rock features and there was like a thousand of them. I'm like, damn, I did this many features? Ah, uh, okay. But what's wrong with that? Because, like, some of them Jones was, like, a lot of, like, a lot of the times earlier in my stages in my career, like, I would take, like, 20, 30,000 for a feature. I didn't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Like, so I just have a whole bunch of 20, 30,000 dollar features uh, from people that don't nobody know. Yeah. And that shit, like, damn, that shit fucked my brain up a little bit. Like, when I be looking at that shit, like, my part hot, but that song ass. <laughs> bro. Like, I ain't doing that shit no more, bro. That are shit you, been over. Are you trying to feel, like, not feel, but be more exclusive and more selective in that process? Yeah, I used to be too friendly with the hooks and shit. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's 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 real. That's definitely real. Okay, of yeah, course. Yeah, but I still be fucking with niggas. Like, I want to do some shit with Summer Walker. I want to do some shit with, like, yes. a lot of the females. Like, I got some shit with Queen Naja. Yes. I want to do some shit with Sizzle. I want to do some shit with... 
who else like I'm really really like oh I I want to do some song with the girl Mo- Muni mm-hmm. Moni yeah 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 yep I, I like the I like the girls because they ain't really coming like with the egos and all of that shit like and we on the same level for for like I sing for the girls you know yeah. what I'm saying like that's pretty much I'm like majority of my shows and even my fans is like. Nine times out of ten, you're gonna see a whole bunch of little girls at my shows, females. <laughs> yeah, that's just what it is. And I feel like we could be like, well, all these pictures that I just named, like we have makes hits, like that. For sure. Um, it's funny that you talk about females showing you love. Obviously, we know this. Was that a little bit difficult for you when you were in a relationship, like navigating that space? Hell yeah. You know, everybody go through their shit in relationships. But me personally, like, I just was like, I got caught at a time where. I, I jumped into a relationship at a time where I was like in my prime prime, like as big as I could be. You feel mm-hmm. me? And I just now started getting to the most money that I ever seen. I just now started like fucking all the bitches that I wanted to fuck. Like. <laughs> so it was like kind of crazy for me. Like I was like, I really wanted to be in a relationship. I'm the one who like in, like persisted and like was keep yeah. coming. Like I'm, I'm trying to be like out the streets. You feel me? Like I'm, right. I'm really like a lover, but I don't want to be. <laughs> but Shit, it, it, it did what it did. Like, I learned a lot in my relationship. That shit matured me. That shit helped me grow as a man. I learned a lot about females. I learned a lot about shit. You feel me? It ain't like we beefing nothing like that. Me and my baby mom, we always be like this. Yeah. But just like we had to, I felt like, me personally, I felt like we was like holding each other back from our prospective careers. She got her mm. own career. I got my own career. And then like when we started fucking with each other, like we just was so locked in with each other. Yeah. And we stopped being so focused on our careers and shit. It just started right. slowing down for both of us. Right. So I was telling her like, man, like we just probably need some space, get our shit together. And you know what I'm saying? Like maybe one day later down the line, you know, if it's meant to be, it'd be type shit. Yeah. I thought it maybe had something to do with the pandemic because, you know, people were locked in for so long that, with that each other. That definitely had a part in it. Like, that's it. <laughs> Really? I be saying this all the time. Like, if you could, if you survived the pandemic relationships, you was a goat. That shit was putting everybody through the test. 